Okay, welcome to you, Charles, for today's media luncheon. Our players are defensive tackle Isaiah Dunning, tight end wide receiver Jamie Potts, and head coach Matt Mitchell in the middle. Coach, if you can uh, break down the Lake Erie game, and then we'll move on to Hillsdale. Sure, obviously happy to get a win. Um, you know, great atmosphere, great crowd, family day at Grand Valley. And we had, uh, you know, a ton of fans there, even though we're not off to a great start as a team. I was very much appreciative as a head coach for the support that we had from our student base and uh, a, lot of, a lot of families of students that came out for the contest. Um, didn't start the way we wanted to. Uh, poor kickoff coverage led to uh, seven immediate points in the first play from scrimmage from Lake Erie. Uh, but I was, uh, you know, proud of our team, especially our offense, for responding to that, you know, given how things have gone. It's very easily on that opening kickoff to get a little bit deflated. Uh, we did not. We, um, getting resilient. So we showed some resiliency there early on, answered with a score bar offense, and then we got a, uh, a one play turnover and, uh, you know, came back. So I think probably the story of the game, you know, overall was the, the turnovers. You know, we were plus five in turnovers, set up our team with some great field position. Then our ability to stop the run. Uh, specifically the All-American tailback Anthony Bilal and our ability to run the ball offensively. Um, you know, I, I mentioned this uh, to our team yesterday. You know, we rushed for 399 yards. Obviously, uh, we know that Lake Erie's front and Lake Erie's defense is not as strong as the, some of the defenses we've faced the first three weeks of the season, but I'm not sure it's, you know, 300 yards worse. Um, and so it's a little bit to do with, uh, you know, the level of competition. But I also thought on the sidelines and watched the tape on Sunday, uh, we were more physical at the, at the line of scrimmage, way more physical at the point of attack. We played through the whistle. We played with more of a chip on our shoulder, way more emotion on the offensive side of the ball. Uh, our, our offensive line played better. Our tight ends, who had not been playing real well, uh, played better. I think our backs uh, made some people miss. We hadn't really made anybody miss the first three weeks of the season, and I thought, our backs, uh, you know, looked more explosive throughout the course of the game. Um, and, uh, you know, we just obviously were able to control the line of scrimmage and control the clock a lot better than we had, uh, you know, with our offense the first three games. Defensively, we knew the tailback was very explosive. We, we had a plan basically set up to kind of uh, limit his touches up inside at the heart of our defense, try to push the ball more to the edge and let our, our guys run to the ball. And we did that. You know, our, our defensive line, both the interior guys and also the ends, played extremely well to fit the run up. Um, and we really forced the ball to the perimeter. And when we forced the ball perimeter, I thought our defense ran to the ball well. You know, we set edges and, and really ran them down. They didn't have much breathing space from the tailback position, both inside or east and west. Uh, they did a good job of this explosive offense, and uh, their staff knows, um, you know, how to complement it. And they threw the ball probably more effectively on that first drive on some play-action passes than we anticipated. But made a little bit of adjustments with how we were playing some of our overhang players and our safeties, and uh, started getting more stops, more turnovers. And uh, obviously, when the score got to that 21-point lead, the 28-point lead, 35-point lead. Um, they they kind of got away from the run, and I thought we were able to pin our ears back a little bit more on the defensive line and you know, get pressure on the quarterback, which really uh, um, you know, affected his throwing and his accuracy. So um, you know, it's, it's a step in the right direction. Uh, you know, we've talked a lot about yesterday. Uh, we've got to take the next step. We've got to continue to make improvements um, you know, heading into next week. And so really this, this week for us, yesterday, our players have off today, but starting back to work here Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Um, you know, we'll, we'll implement a game plan for Hillsdale College, but this is going to be about you know, what improvement can we make over the course of the next three days uh, you know, to, to keep building upon what happened last Saturday. And um, there's a lot of football left to be played in this season. Uh, regards to Hillsdale specifically next Saturday, it's um, heading down there as their homecoming contest. Um, you know, it's uh, watching on tape. It's a, it's a Hillsdale team that uh, doesn't beat itself. They're not going to make a lot of mistakes and, and beat themselves. They're two and two, but they could easily be four and zero. Oh. You know, their loss at Finley, they had you know the ball back down eight in the fourth quarter with the chance to tie the game up. And then their other loss last weekend down to Indianapolis, which Indianapolis is a playoff team in Division Two. They got the ball. Um, you know, they're down five. Uh, points. They got the ball deep into the red zone on Indianapolis and went for it on fourth down, didn't convert. So they're easily could be sitting here uh, at 4-0. and They've got some new faces on offense, a local product from Rockford, Mark LaPrairie is their quarterback. Um, you know, and uh, he's 
athletic. You can see some things he does well. He's also learning, uh, you know, their system and how they do things at Hillsdale. Uh, Bennett Lewis, the leading rusher, did not play last week. I'm not sure why, but he didn't play last week. But he's um, an elusive back that's uh, fast and is kind of a home run hitter. And then uh, defensively, they're going through uh, having to replace three really good linebackers. You know, Brett Paschke last year was arguably one of the best defensive players in our league, and he graduated. So they've got a lot of their D line back, but they're replacing, you know, more of that second and third level of their defense. Um, and, uh, you know, obviously working through that a little bit. But. Uh, we know how it's going to go at Hillsdale. Uh, we can't afford to get behind on the scoreboard and chase the scoreboard. And that works to their advantage, obviously, with the style of offense and defense that they play. And, um, you know, we um, Hillsdale's not going to beat themselves. Uh, they're going to be very efficient offensively, and uh, they're not going to turn the ball over. And their defense is going to be play very hard. They're going to run to the ball, uh, and they're, they're very fundamentally sound on both sides of the ball. So. Um, we got to take the next step. We've got to see our, our team take the next step when we head down there. And it'll be about us this week throughout the course of preparation. Questions? Matt, you were talking about uh, La Prairie. Um, you said he's athletic, and, but you said he's also learning. Um, can you expand a little bit more about what you've seen from him? Yeah, you know, it, it, Hillsdale has always been the type of team that um, doesn't throw, or, you know, a lot of five step pocket type passes so even though he's not the tallest in stature their offense you know fits his style of play they move him a lot there's a lot of sprint outs and boots and he, he does a lot of things throwing on the run they're also probably as opposed to maybe a couple other quarterbacks they've had in the past whether it's Weatherhead or Misfit or Landry last year they're using him more in the run game some design quarterback runs because he is, he's shifty. Um, he's a good athlete that way. Um, you know, and, and I said, you, you can see his skill set. You can see that he does a good job throwing the ball on the run when he's got a clean pocket and is out in the open and then can run the ball. And, I, you know, I, I think that I'm not speaking for their coaching staff. You can also see he's a first time starter and he's learning and progressing and growing from game to game as he's kind of, uh, you know, getting his first taste of college football. Uh, big picture question. Uh, you know, you have three losses. You win last week to start feeling better about yourself. And I get asked this all the time. You know, with the playoffs are a million miles away, but given the tradition of the program, can you make playoffs? How do you look at this? Well, I mean, right sitting here week five, I've, I have no idea. And we haven't ever talked about that within our team meeting or really anything. I mean, we, we talked about how uh, oh, and three is not how we anticipated things to go down. That's not how we wanted to start it, but it was a set of circumstances that we were in, and now it was about how we're going to react and respond to adversity. And I, you know, I think what we're focusing on more now is how are we going to respond and react to adversity last week. I thought our team came out and had an edge to them Saturday against Lake Erie, and now I'm going to, you know, talk about what's, you know, what's the next step and how we're going to react and respond to that. So it has more to do with that. Be honest with you, Pete. Than taking a look at anything, standings, you know, anything like that. I think we're more focused on what's six inches in front of our face, and um, that's Tuesday's practice and the preparation that we have, and uh, getting some guys healthy. You know, getting our, our quarterback, starting quarterback, back healthy, and some other guys, you know, ready to go for Saturday. Yeah, coach. And just on that note, as far as uh, parling goes, and I know there were some injuries to the offensive line as well. Can you just uh, talk about that a little bit. Yeah, basically on the offensive line, you know, we talked a little bit about this uh, post game. Uh, Cameron Hobbs had been starting at right tackle. He had had an ankle injury, and so uh, we went with Dan DeLuca. Dan um, it showed some signs of some promise in his first start. I mean, he's got a lot of work to do, but uh, we're, you know, we're not disappointed the way that he played. Uh, Eric Laboon, our left tackle, was. Um, banged up with a foot injury and then he also had a, a thigh bruise and he just he tried to go and went out and couldn't go so when that happened we moved uh, Jim Walsh who's been playing very well at guard we moved him out to tackle and put Aaron Cox in so basically for you know mo majority of the snaps we had two new guys in there playing an offensive line two new starters and there's some highs and lows those guys kind of you know got some things figured out um, Heath was throwing but just couldn't throw well enough uh, you know to, to play and um, Isaiah had, had a good week of practice and uh, Bart Williams was ready to go as the backup so we decided to make that decision so um, you know I, I think the plan is this is their off day but um, you know Heath will get in with our trainers continue to rehab I'm hoping we can 
he can be full go tomorrow. If he can full go tomorrow, then he'll practice. And if he practices well, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and he's the starter on Saturday. And like last week, I was cautiously optimistic that he was play. He didn't play. Um, to be honest with you, I'll be surprised if he's not playing on Saturday, based on the progress he made. But you know, I'm not. It's hard to predict those type of things. Well, I guess we'll see how he's feeling Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. What did you uh, What did you think of Bart Williams? What he did? Uh, not bad. Um, you know, just handed the ball off a lot, waited till the play clock got down to one. <laughs> but um, we, we, we had two throws that he went in there and, and got in there and did, you know, for the first time having to really run the team. I thought he was in, you know, command of the team and did a good job. Um, you know, he's a redshirt freshman. We got some other redshirt freshmen that have been playing a lot too, and they're developing, and I think he's along with them. So we didn't. You know, we had a bunch of guys get in that game due to the nature of the score at the end. We just didn't gloss over that tape. And we spent a lot of time yesterday, you know, watching that tape and coaching those guys. We coached our team extremely hard yesterday afternoon. And Bart was one of those guys, along with some other young guys that um, got coached hard. You know, Keon Belcher got his really first reps at defensive end and Cody Moore. And I could go through the guys. Uh, we're still going through a growth process with two of our safeties, Tyvel Jemison and Kyle Short. And they did some good things on Saturday. Tyvel had a pick, made a nice play. but. They did some horrendous things too, and so we're you know continue to coach uh, those guys and really work with a lot of these younger players that have potential and it's unrealized yet, and we're just still coaching them. So Bart would be in the same set. He knew last two weeks that he had to be the backup quarterback and took a lot of reps, so he got coached really hard on practice day because he was one snap away from being the guy that had to go in and play. And I you know I thought he handled that well for a redshirt freshman. And uh, Isaiah, just as far as um, being a team leader, you're a senior. Um, what kind of things are people saying in the locker room right now after that big win? Um, it was a good win, but right now we're just focused on the next game, uh, not really looking too far ahead. We're just taking it one game at a time. And last one, Jamie, just as far as uh, the offense goes, um, any changes this week that you guys can be looking to do um, in the game for Saturday? Um, you know, we haven't really gone over it yet, but, you know, we just got to keep being physical up front. Obviously, it uh, definitely paid off last game, um, rushing for as many yards as we did. Um, you know, we just got to do little things right and uh, keep uh, taking care of business on the offense side of the ball. Okay, that will conclude today's media luncheon. Thank you.